Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. Welcome back to this informal series on Blender for AI developers. In this one, I'm going to talk about how to create some shapes using some tools that are particularly useful um, for rounding off edges and adding some more detail to your shapes. So what I'm going to do first is just hit A to delete a to select and X to delete all these. It looks like I need to turn on my screencast keys again. And we're going to create a new shape. So I'm going to do shift A and we're going to create a cylinder. I'm going to create a battery. So this is just sort of like a double A battery that goes into most electronics that don't don't have rechargeable batteries included these days. And I'm gonna show you just how you would create this super simple shape. So the first thing I wanna show you is that maybe we don't want this to be centered on these axes. So I have already just by instinct tabbed in and out of object mode, edit mode, but make sure you tab into edit mode. And then I want you to select all of these, these vertices so you can, if they're not already, you can always hit A to select all of them. What I want to remind you is don't just click and drag to select all of these because anything that's hidden behind it will not be selected. So that's just something to be aware of. If you hit the A key, it will select all of them. And then we want to move this up on the y, or on the Z axis. So I'm going to go G, Z, and then I want it to sort of sit right on this plane right here. So you can see up here in the top corner, what the distance is that I've moved it. And it looks like to get it right on this, this plane right here is about one meter. Well, it's exactly one meter. So one cool thing is we can just type in a number here, one, and then you'll see that this is now kind of fixed at one meter and you just have to hit enter. And now it is sitting on this flat plane. Now I'm not gonna bother making sure that the scale is perfect on this. We're just gonna make a gigantic battery. So we're going to select with the three key, we're gonna make, make it face select, and I'm going to use G, Z, to move up this face until it's kind of about the right dimensions of a AA battery. Okay, so we have this uh, sort of battery shape, and as you know, most batteries have a little, um, a bump on top, I'll call it. And to do that, we learned in the last video that we can use the inset option. And I'll show you that using this right here. So I can sort of inset it like that, maybe. That looks pretty good. And let's say we couldn't get that quite far enough in. We can always use the scale, so S, to scale it even further. So that's that's always helpful that you can you can keep going if that wasn't enough. I'm going to switch back into the normal select mode. And then I want to extrude this. And that looks decent. Okay, so now we've got a basic battery shape. But it's not rounded anywhere. And batteries tend to be rounded somewhat. So let me show you the bevel modifier. Or not modifier, the bevel option. So if we make sure we're moved in pretty close to this, we can select this entire edge by going into edge select mode and then holding the alt key and then clicking on one of these edges. So as you can see, we have this entire edge thing selected and you can also see that the, the rotation's kind of weird because it's actually still kind of focused on the center. So we can hit the period key or we can hit the, let's see, is it this one? No, that's not right we can make sure that we're focused by the period key on the number pad. And then uh, there is another way, let's see, is it view frame selected? That's the one. Uh, so now if we rotate around, we're focused on this object and we wanna use the bevel modifier, which is here, or you can use control B. So we'll just do it with this one first. And you can sort of drag this out and now we're getting as it is now, it's almost like it's just sort of filed down. But we have some options here. We can change 
apparently this is in both places. I haven't I haven't really used these tools as much. I generally just use the hotkeys, so this is kind of a new thing for me to see. Uh, but in either place, it looks like you can change the segments here. So what that does is it now allows us to smooth this out. So that's pretty neat. We can we can intentionally add some roundedness to this without having to use other modifiers that smooth out the entire shape. We can choose how much detail we want in this shape. So I'm just going to choose four segments and then kind of click away and that will uh, make it so that it's it's uh, good there. Now I'm going to switch back into this mode and do this one with control B. So we're going to do alt and then control B and we can do the same thing. And you can scroll up and down on your mouse button to decide how much detail to get. But I'm going to go with maybe, I don't know, I think this is six or five. And now if we wanted to change things later, we could we could switch this. So now we've got this shape like this, and we'll just do the bottom one too. So we'll do Alt, Control B, and something like that. Okay, so now we've got a rounded bottom and a rounded top. And you're gonna look at this and think, well, what if I want it smooth? Well, smooth in a 3D modeling software is kind of misleading because no matter what, you're going to have flat shapes in it. It's made up of triangles. So at least in Blender and in your normal modeling mode, I should say, there might be other methods of modeling that could actually get perfectly smooth. But this one, because it's made of, of vertices and not of like mathematical curves, you do end up having these individual points no matter what you do. So there's a trick you can do right off the bat if you're in object mode. So make sure you're not in edit mode, object mode. You can shade smooth and now this looks much smoother. And what it's doing is rather than calculating what the uh, what the color should be based on the, sh the, the faces being completely flat, it's calculating them as if it's like averaging out the curve. So it does look quite a bit better, but you'll notice you get some of these weird artifacts. So for that, we may actually want to Alt select this and then do a bevel here and tab back out and now you'll see that it's it's sort of fixed that because it's got all of these faces and now those are perfectly flat and it looks a lot better. So there are lots of tricks to making things look better and smoother and things like that so just be aware that there are even entire courses out there that are based on making what's called hard surface modeling easier. So just just be aware that if you can't get it working perfectly, you shouldn't feel too over or too bad because it's kind of difficult to do. You can always add more lines to this when you create it in the first place. Like we could have doubled the amount of segments around this and it would make it look a little smoother. But generally switching between shade flat and shade smooth you can get it to look pretty good, especially for a battery when we're probably only gonna view it from a distance like this. There's not really much reason to have an insane amount of detail on this. So that's just something I wanted to, to mention. Now, you can also do something called a loop cut. So let's say, I'm gonna try and undo that bevel that I just did. Control Z, there we go. We can do what's called a loop cut. And that uh, we can do with either this tool or I'm gonna do Control R. And this will allow us to create a new edge that I can bring in or put out here. I'm gonna bring it all the way in right here. And then if I go back into uh, this mode right here, the object view mode, you can see it looks a lot different. Um, it is much sharper looking at that edge. And I can do another one right here and I can bring this in and tab out. Now I have a much sharper edge here. Um, so these loop cuts basically add a little bit more detail and give you some control when you're working with objects. You can also, if you do a control R here, basically it depends on wherever you hover your mouse is where the, where the loop cut will be. This yellow one is just where it's suggested. If you scroll up, you'll actually be able to create lots of these 
And for a battery, maybe it doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, we might want to add some just for maybe lighting or something like that to look a little bit better. But, uh, you know, maybe we want to just split this into three so that we have, you know, options. Let's say I'm just coming up with this idea on the fly. Let's say we wanted to bubble this out a bit because this battery is bad or something like that. We could shift select a few of these and then we can just move it sort of like that. And oh, now we've got this battery that looks a little bubbled out. Like maybe we don't want to use that, but it's it's an example of something you might do if you added some extra loop cuts. There's definitely better ways to do this than what I just did, or at least more precise ways that you can make it look a little smoother. But I just wanted to show you that other way of doing, or that way of doing loop cuts that had multiple loops. So I think that's enough for this video. Uh, I hope this is helpful to help you understand beveling and loop cuts. And uh, in the coming videos, we'll talk about a few more concepts.